After studying music for four years, it's just kind of nice to dip our heads out of the pool, like, oh, this is why we do this. Evelyn was running like a painting in the rain. The UK and these studios are kind of the birthplace of our craft in music production. Being there as someone who's deeply in love with the craft is amazing. We began at Abbey Road with Ken Scott, and it was really cool. We worked with the band called Clean Cut Kit, a band from Liverpool, and they were, apart from super funny and super cool, so fantastic. Uh, I don't think I've ever been in the presence of such proficient and awesome musicians that know what they want, but are also open to do whatever. It's actually really insane. Ken Scott was the first person that we got to observe. Um, he did the Beatles records and he also produced David Bowie. So it was really cool to see him work with an indie pop band who was up and coming in the scene here. Abbey Road was really cool. It's, it's also just one of those places where it's like, you only hear about that and then you, you don't really think it's real until you're there and then you're like, it still doesn't feel real. Maybe it's like a Hollywood set. With Ken, you could hear all of the individual layers and um, he was really able to pick out what was working well for the song and what wasn't. I kind of went into it with not a lot of expectations, but my mind was definitely blown by all of the studios we got to see. And then coming to real world, I mean, I've been looking at real world on the internet since I got into production, and it's just pretty surreal being here at such an amazing place. It was really cool to see the different kinds of workflows in both the sessions. I think they were both very different. Like Ken had a more, okay, play it this way approach. And Ethan was all about setting the vibe of the room and having that influence the music. Any point, if the hairs on your hands stand up when you're listening to a tape, that is it. Don't second guess it, don't look back. You've achieved what you were supposed to achieve. If you hear something and you, you don't think there's enough top end, don't immediately reach for the EQ. Think about where the microphone is first, or even if it is the right microphone. So the EQ should be a last resort. The other thing to think about first is if you're doing a mix and something doesn't sound bright enough, the first thing you should try to do is just turn it up a little bit. And it's been amazing working with Kevin Killen. He's also so personable. And just to see an engineer work in real time, very much under pressure, but he never lets it show. He's not trying to take attention away from the band or attention away from the music, but he's doing everything in service of it. I'm not sure what it is. It seems like some kind of voodoo, but it's incredible to watch. I myself see myself as a recording engineer first, getting to watch him. And obviously he's also a mix engineer and a producer and all of that, but what I get, gather from him is that, like, as an engineer, that's his shtick and he's so good at it. There are five things you need to make a great record. You need a great song. You need a great arrangement. You need a great production. You need a great recording. And those four things have to align together to give you this unique kind of sound. So that when the, you know, the needle drops, you, your whole emotion just goes like this. You physically just go, oh. I just lean into the speakers because I want to hear what's coming out of the speakers, like I'm engaged. It's not a passive thing. Somebody asked me last night, did I consider myself to be an expert? And I just said, no, I'm just experienced. That's it. I'm not an expert because you're always learning something all the time. Being in such a beautiful environment lends itself to such a 
deep music making. I hadn't seen this sort of communication in a band, in a genre that wasn't jazz. It feels like it's it's reiterating everything that I've I've wanted to see in the industry and like and, and hoped that I would see. Now I'm like, oh, maybe I want to come move to England. <laughs> It's kind of crazy watching some of these masters work. I feel like I was able to be immersed in each of the different sessions, and they were so different that I was just able to take away something different every time from the musicians, from the engineers, from the producers, from the studio. This has really sealed the deal for me that music is what I need to spend my life doing.